Okay, in this video, I want to cover money supply, why it's important, and we're going to touch on some things about inflation and what's going on with the Fed. So in money supply, there are three measures, M1, so this is all the, the coins and the notes, the dollar bills, the stuff we carry in our wallets, all that stuff that's in circulation. That's what M1 covers. M2 is time deposits real short-term time deposits at the bank that you would use and um, this this is only for time deposits less than a hundred thousand dollars which is important I'll explain why in a second but this is also M2 is is mutual fund money market accounts so if you own a money market whether it's through the bank or through a brokerage company, that's what it's covering. And it's important. This is, when I say you, you are a retail customer. You're a retail investor. Okay. M3, which shock of shocks that on Monday, the 23rd of 2006, guess what? The U.S. government ceased reporting this number. Stopped reporting it. No longer publishing it. No longer doing anything. Uh, why? Well, M3 covers all these time deposits greater than $100,000. And it also covers all of the U.S. dollars that are in banks in the U.K. and in Canada. Sorry, that's U.K. Okay. and Canada. These are called euro dollars, not to be confused with the euro, which is in Europe. These are called euro dollars. When it's a U.S. dollar held in the U.K. Good night. I'm sorry. U.K. and Canada. So why did the government stop reporting this? Well, this is what the big institutions are doing. And I guess the government just doesn't want us tracking what the big institutions are doing with their money. So why do I want to talk about money supply? Well, there aren't many never evers in our life right not many but i'll tell you one that we've never ever had 19 trillion dollars sitting in our system thanks to the fed's quantitative easing and zerp zero interest rate policy and the reason this occurred is because of 2008 complete market meltdown and the Federal Reserve pumping all this money in the system, and they're trying to do what? They're trying to create inflation, which hasn't worked. Now, there's inflation in our system, and I'm going to show you some stats. And In fact, if, if you want to really get educated on what's going on, you go to Shadow Stats. Uh, it's a website created and run by John Williams, a brilliant man. But they ha he has all the different graphs that track the way things used to be or were supposed to be until the government started manipulating things. And I'm going to give you some examples of that. So this is one of ShadowSat's more popular charts. You can see it's measuring the CPI. So you can see here early on, they're on top of each other, the blue and the red. This is the government measuring inflation as a basket of things we spend money on, right? Food, oil, housing costs, and so forth, right? Then all of a sudden, you can see here, in 1980, uh, actually, it's, you can see here, it's in uh, late 82, early 83, it separates. Well, that's because in 1980, the Congress voted to re remove certain items from this basket of inflation. Okay, and then you can see it separated. So what the government is saying is, oh, the things we're spending money on, uh, they're not important to our measure. And so then the red line is down here. Okay, and you can see it separates. And then they did, and just so you know, the reason of, of this lag, they made a decision in 1980, and it, take, it takes a couple years for the, the statistic to show up. They did it again in 1990. So right in 1990, here, and then two years later, the gap gets bigger. And they took more things out. What are the main things they're taking out? Well, they're taking out uh, little insignificant things like uh, energy costs and housing costs. You know, things that really we don't spend a lot of money on, right? Well, why did they do that? They did that because this is the measure the government uses to calculate our retired folks' Social Security payments. So they figured, well, if we can convince the Social Security recipients, the people that are retired, that inflation really isn't that big of a deal, then we don't have to give them as big a raise in their Social Security income. You can see the blue line shows the inflation in the system, right? So, you know, 
Here it is. I took uh, my wife and two of my kids to see a movie yesterday. Eleven dollars. So it's it's January 2016. It takes eleven dollars to buy a ticket to a movie, and this just shows that there is there is certain price inflation in our system, but that's not the type of inflation the Fed is trying to generate. The inflation that drives our economy is this. Is wage growth. Now, clearly it's more jobs, but it's also wage growth. So let's look at a couple more statistics here. So this absolutely bogus number that we keep hearing from the media in the White House about the unemployment rate being 5%, that, this is what they're quoting right here, which is just absolute bunk. You can see the gray line and then more startlingly the blue line. Th this is probably the, the, the longest term measure what we looked at the most. These are the people that, see, the folks in the red line, this is just simply that are, that are currently filing for unemployment, that are on unemployment. But there's a lot of people here that their unemployment ran out, they're still not working, and there's people up here that have just given up. They're just not even trying to work anymore, and you you ask them what they're doing, and they're they're a consultant or they're you know they're just trying to get by. So this is the real number, but there's no way the White House is going to report this number or this number. This is what makes them look good. Okay, so we haven't had any employment growth, but guess what? We haven't had any wage growth. So look, this what I re, the reason I love. The shadow stats and looking at this kind of data point is this is something this is straight from the fed this is not being manipulated and filtered through the media or the white house so this shows in billions of dollars that what you're looking at it in the, the the blue dots here is what the tax deposits are so when you get paid and that money comes out of your check for payroll tax it's reported to the government that this is the numbers okay so if people were making more each year we should see a sloping up line but look at this here, here's you know 2008 meltdown. So this this blue line here shows the the specific recession. Here's blue line wages drop and look wages have not grown. They have not grown. We are still at or below the levels of where we're at in 2008. So seven years later, we have not had any kind of wage growth. And wage growth is what drives the economy. The Fed's pumping all this money in to try to get create more real jobs and to get more money in people's pockets so they can start spend money in the economy. That's what they're trying to accomplish. But as you can clearly see, and you probably know, and you probably know beyond all the propaganda coming out of the media in the White House, is that, that we are not in this recovery mode that everybody keeps talking about. We are not in recovery. So when the Fed finally raised interest rates in December 2015, we are now on this very precarious teeter-totter, right? They've raised interest rates a quarter point. No big deal in the big picture. It was more of an attempt for the Fed to prove that they're right, that they created a recovery and they can now raise interest rates. A lot of the preliminary indications they were giving is that they were going to do four more raises in 2016. Well, if they do that in this struggling economy, we go very deflationary and ultimately, even worse, we go in, into depression, right? Because deflations are what all governments are trying to avoid. That's why they try to create inflation. They want to battle deflation. If the Fed, now that they have what's, you know, you're seeing, you're going to start seeing a lot of articles talking about dry powder, right? Now that the Fed raised interest rates, they can lower them back down because you saw what happened the first week of the stock market in 2016. They could lower it back down. Now, if they do this, all they're simply doing is, is building this, bigger cauldron of hyper inflation they're just adding to this number right here which is just a problem now there's a third thing they can do which is that you're the, the old one and done i don't i don't see that as a very likely scenario we have too active of a fed they're gonna they're gonna want to do something but when people ask me okay rob why why does there have to be this massive correction in the stock market that you and other people are always talking about something that's going to be a repeat or worse in 2008. Why? Why does that have to happen? Well, it gets back to this. This never ever. Folks, you got to do something with this money. This money just can't sit there. Inflation is a measure of M3, M3 
times velocity. That's the measure of inflation. Right now, this money is not moving around. Banks are not lending it. It's just sitting there. Eventually, it's going to start moving around. And when it starts moving around, that's how we go into this, this hyperinflation like we had in the 70s. And it's not going to be pretty. So anyway, I know I got very technical with this particular video. As always, go to thebrinkmanacademy.com to see other videos. But I appreciate you uh, getting your primer on money supply. Thanks for watching.